What is going on? It has been a while since I have uh, posted anything. Uh, that is mostly due to the fact that I was moving and, and uh, haven't really gotten a bunch of new knives because I was moving. But um, I have recently gotten into a new hobby, which is 3D printing. And honestly, that's been taking up a bunch of time. Uh, I have gotten a demon. I think I mentioned it in another video, I was getting one. And I will do a video on it at some point, but... To put it short and sweet, I love it. It's probably my favorite knife uh, right now as far as just something to flip. Uh, anyway, this video is not going to be about butterfly knives. This video is going to be about 3D printing. So just like many, whenever I you know, Googled 3D printer for beginners or first 3D printer or something along those lines, the Ender 3 popped up, right? Everybody says, get the Ender 3. Uh, it's a great beginner. Uh, 3d printer so i started looking at prices on them and you know they range from um 200 bucks and up i mean you can spend 500 bucks on, on an ender 3 you know one of the, the neo max or whatever it's called um i don't know all of the different models creality has a ton of them and they're kind of convoluted and get kind of confusing so you know a really great channel for that kind of stuff would be frankly built uh, i watched a bunch of his videos he does a lot of cosplay stuff which is really cool um but I watched a ton of his videos to get information, and, and that's kind of what I was going off of to decide what I needed. So I just went with the basic Ender 3. So the only thing I did was I put the um, glass bed on it, and I did a, um, what is it, Capricorn Bowden tube. Um, that's all I've done to this thing. It was 189 bucks or something along those lines on Amazon, which for me, turn some lights on, which for me was, was fine. Um, Cheap enough to get into, but if I didn't wind up liking it or wanting to stay with it, not a big deal. Now, this thing <clears throat> has been a little workhorse. I have printed so much stuff on this. This box I have down here is just full of prints that I've made on it. Um, you know, I've printed all the calibration cubes and all the little things like that. I printed this Iron Man helmet um, in pieces, of course. Um, and I was a little bit bummed out to find out I couldn't really print it in full size, uh, which, you know, at the time I didn't quite realize. Like I said, I kind of jumped into this. I didn't do tons of homework. You can see I very poorly th uh, plastic welded it all together. But, you know, it's good enough. I intend on painting it eventually. It is kind of sanded. Um, but for now, it just sits like this in blue. And it came out pretty good. Now, there are spots that didn't print great. You know, right there. Um here you know there are definitely spots that aren't perfect but for just you know sitting right there underneath my tv it's fine i printed this batman cowl uh same deal obviously it's not life size it's very small but this came out really really pretty well i mean there's you know some cleanup to be done in some spots and of course you know you can't expect a 3d printer to print something that's like movie quality or whatever you have to put a little effort into it but anyway, I'm kind of going off the rails here. So for 189 bucks, this 3D printer is awesome for the beginner. If you decide you don't want to do it or you don't want to stick with it, it's not that big of a deal. It's less than 200 bucks. I don't know what they are right now. They might be a little over. Um, and there's a lot of, there's a little bit of a learning curve. You know, you got to learn how to level the bed. You have to learn how to, you know, what to set temperatures to. You got to learn how to use a slicer, uh, all that jazz. But I think that's one of the pros of using a beginner 3d printers you learn all that and you kind of have to learn what it is and and what all of those different terms are hot end and extruder and bowden tube and all that you gotta learn all of it and um from there i knew i wanted something bigger and <laughs> because i had such great luck with creality i just went on their website looked through the stuff they had and i went with the um cr10 smart well, if you've done any, any reading or video watching about the CR10 Smart, you know that tons of people have lots of issues with it. So I didn't watch a single video about this thing, other than like one, which was actually a positive video, one of the few, uh, until after I purchased it. And I thought, well, I could cancel the order, order something else, but for 480 bucks or whatever this thing was, all the features it had, there wasn't really anything comparable in that price range, at least from Creality. Like I said, I'm sure I could have looked harder and found different stuff. But there's so many companies that are making 3D printers, it's hard to know which ones to trust. 
I was looking at the FL Sun Super Racer, but it doesn't have as large of a, a, a printing bed. And like I said, I, I, I'm a huge nerd. I like the Marvel stuff and all, and all that. So I wanted to be able to print, obviously, Batman's DC. So it just, anyway, I wanted to be able to print, uh, you know, superhero type stuff or Star Wars type stuff, which tends to be a little larger. So I went with the CR-10 Smart, and I went ahead and, and was hopeful that um, by the time that I got it, you know, and a year after most of these videos I was watching, that there may have been updates to the software that would fix things. I'm waiting for it to heat up, by the way, to start on a print. Um, so it shows up really well packaged, mostly put together, right? So um, the top half of it was completely put together. The gantry and everything was all on. I just basically had to... Oh, starting to print. I basically just had to put the gantry and the supports together to the base. Um, started it up, did a bed level, tried to print a calibration cube, and I believe this was my first attempt. Looks like crap. Weird squiggly lines. You can it, There's like holes in it. I mean, it really came out bad. Uh, that was pretty upsetting, but I thought, okay, let me redo a calibration or redo the bed level. So I redid the bed level, did it again. Um, and I don't remember which one I, it was next. I printed, you know, a whole bunch. These are all prints. So what I did to get it to print well, which by the way, I did eventually get it to print well, this printed on it. I did absolutely zero cleanup or sanding. Um, so, I mean, compare that to the under three, which has had, a, you know, some sanding done on it to, you know, get rid of these, these large um, kind of whatever you'd call that circular pattern, you know, growth rings or something like that from a tree. But there, this didn't have any of that. This printed very well. And this took, I mean, this was a, you know, a 24 hour print. And on the inside... That's the worst spot right there. But once again, it's on the inside and you could sand it versus the inside from the under three. Now, um, this impressed me quite a bit. I will say the first time I attempted to print this, I printed half of it or about 65% and then it said complete 100% and it obviously did not complete the print. So I was a little nervous. I deleted the file off the SD card, re-uploaded it and it printed fine. Um, I didn't complete this Iron Man helmet. I started printing the main body, the main helmet, and the filament wound up getting caught up somehow, and it messed it up overnight. So not the printer's fault. It was the filament. It was probably my fault. So what I wound up doing was going through, just like everybody says, and checking all of the bolts, um, making sure everything is tight, Re uh, which a lot of stuff wasn't, as everybody has said. But that's not that big of a deal, right? Then I went and I... I updated the firmware, and the YouTube video from Creality Online is terrible. I had to watch other people's YouTube videos and kind of figure it out. I'm not an overly tech-savvy person. Uh, I figured it out. Not, the, not that big of a deal. You basically update the board within the printer, and then you update the screen. Uh, not a huge deal. I got both of those updated, and it printed way better just from that. Um, I printed this Groot after that, but... Uh, it's hard to tell. This is kind of small, but there were still some spots that just didn't look well. You can see right in there. That looked like crap. They really didn't look good. So I started printing larger items, which I'm not going to go digging through all of that. Um, but there's a bunch of stuff in there, like large flat items, like a ruler to see how well it would print that. And um, there were still some weird squiggles. So what I wound up doing was I put a level, a bubble level on the gantry, and it was like, significantly off the right side was a half inch higher than the left side so i you know i i i uh, disassembled a little bit and leveled it with the two uh z-axis screws i believe is what those are if i get any of the terminology wrong i apologize i'm fairly new to this uh and i leveled the gantry and from that point on it it printed great um anytime that i'm going to do a large print i do a bed level bed level takes five to ten minutes it's not a big deal you hit level and you walk away, right? You go grab a snack, you come back and you start your print. If I'm gonna print a whole bunch of little parts, for instance, this clock, um, you know, if you're gonna go through and print a bunch of little gears and stuff, then every five, six gears, I'll do a bed level. So I bed level it a lot. Um, it's not a big deal to do that. I don't know if that's necessary, 
but I have noticed that after five, six, seven gears, you know, small intricate things like that, that uh, it'll kind of begin to print poorly. And so I will redo the bed level and then print again and it's usually fine. So not an overly um, professional video here, nothing super tech uh, filled. That's my personal experience with it. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's been working really well. The smart features are cool. I don't use them, you know, uh, 3D printing over Wi-Fi and being able to start prints from your phone. I never do that. I never mess with it. I have the app. The app is kind of like wish.com. Like there's a bunch of random advertisements that pop up when you're using, excuse me, when you're using the app and that's fairly irritating. So I really don't, um, don't use the app and I didn't get it for the, for that feature. Uh, but I feel like it's kind of half baked. I feel like it's not quite done yet. I feel like it shouldn't be a feature yet. As far as uh, all the other features that this offers with the auto bed leveling, the large bed, um, the uh, runout sensor, all that stuff, it works really well. I will say I have had some issues with this um, extruder in that it's kind of a pain to get the filament to go through it. And I have had filament bind, bind up in here and it, 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 I had to take this all apart to get the filament out. And it is a bit of a pain in the butt to get it back together. There's a spring on this side. It's a pain to get everything lined back up. But... Um, I really haven't had that many issues. I've had it bind up twice over probably, I don't know, a week, two weeks worth of printing. And I, I mean time the machine is printing, not time I've owned it. I've owned it for a couple months. So if you're on the fence about purchasing it, it, if you're somebody who wants to pull it out of the box, hit print, not touch it, this is not the printer for you. If, you, if you're somebody who wants to um, have something to fiddle with and mess around with, which I think most people who 3D print are into messing with stuff and tinkering because obviously that's a lot about what this hobby is. So if that's you and you're okay with tinkering with stuff, then this printer's fine. You just need to up update the software and maybe check all the bolts and, and make sure you put a level on the gantry and make sure everything is put together properly. If you do that, it should print fine. And I think that's why, you know, I, I mentioned there was one video I watched where the guy said it was a good printer and all the others pretty much disagreed with that. And I believe it was because... Um, when he got his printer, it was a couple years ago now when it first came out and it was far more disassembled in the box. So when he put it together, he put it together better than the ones that come more pre-assembled came, if that makes sense. So if it's pre-assembled from Creality in China or from the you know factory in China that makes these, it's not going to be put together with the same care that the individual who purchased it would put it together with. So check it, check the bolts, make sure everything's put together properly and uh, it should be fine. Anyway, this video is going on 13 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down, but I'm gonna attempt to make some more videos about some new butterfly knives that I've gotten. I've got a couple on the way from a trade on Reddit, so we'll see how those go. Um, but uh, thanks for watching, bye.